Terraform has revolutionized infrastructure as code and has become an indispensable tool for DevOps teams, cloud native developers, and cloud engineers. However, as projects grow in complexity and scale, managing Terraform configurations can become a daunting task. In this video, we're going to solve this problem. I'm going to share with you an amazing open source project called Terramate. We're going to see what it has to offer, how it works, and obviously a demo. All the links can be found in the description below. Always it's nice to support open source initiatives, so I'd recommend uh, it'd be amazing if you can star the GitHub repository, check out the open issues, join their Discord server, and uh, just get involved in the community. So all the links can be found in the description below. Make sure you check that out and uh, let's get started with the video. Terramate is a powerful toolkit designed to enhance your Terraform experience in ways you never thought was possible. In this video, we're going to explore why anyone who uses Terraform should consider using Terramate's code generator and orchestrator features. One thing I want to highlight before we get started is that Terramate goes beyond than just being a Terraform wrapper. Before we even get started in the video, I want to mention what is the main value for Terramate. One thing that you should be very clear for when you're getting started with this tool that is known as stacks. So stacks are basically imagine you have a really big Terraform project and you split it into multiple smaller units. Now, other features of Terraform that we will be learning again um, in the future of this video, such as code generation, orchestration, all of these are the features that are required to manage the stacks at scale. You can learn more about it in the documentation. And here you can see that it says that if you want to think about a stack, you can think of it as an infrastructure as code, which declares a set of assets and their properties. So as always, like I just mentioned, imagine that you have a really big Terraform project, you break it into smaller parts, that's basically essentially what a stack is. And uh, by that logic, uh, you know, we can say that uh, Teramic stacks, like there would be maybe hundreds or even thousands of Teramic stacks that you are going to be managing, as you can see over here. So a Teramic project can manage dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of stacks because of the, like you can use the CLI and all sorts of things. And also the other thing that a stack combines of is the state that describes the status of the assets according to the latest deployments. For example, the Terraform state, Pulumi state, etc. And lastly, the configuration, we all know what the configurations are. If you're already familiar with Terraform and uh, infrastructure as code tools. Some of the benefits, reducing the runtime significantly because you're targeting only the required stack. So you have broken it down into smaller, smaller chunks. Uh, limiting the blast, blast radius, separate management uh, responsibilities, and uh, removal of uh, sequential and blocking operations. So go through this document. I leave the links in the description below, but uh, we'll be covering all of these things. Don't worry about it. Like these uh, code samples that you're watching right now, we'll do a complete demo. So let's get started with that. It's a comprehensive solution that takes your Terraform projects to the very next level. Whether you're a seasoned DevOps or professional or if you're just starting your journey in infrastructure as code, Terramate has something to offer for everyone and the best part is being open source, so community driven, love it. Krinal, what is the primary focus here? The primary focus of Terramate here is to improve the developer experience. And it achieves this by providing an array of features that streamline your Terraform workflows, ultimately reducing the time spent on writing and maintaining infrastructure code. Although we will talk more about the features in depth, but one standout feature of Terramate is its ability to generate native Terraform code. This means that the infrastructure code that is being created by Terramate seamlessly integrates with existing Terraform tooling. It's just Terraform Cloud, Spacelift, Terragrunt, and others. Because people may ask that, Kunal, but I already have my existing projects. And now if you're using this open source project called Terramate, do I have to compromise on my existing projects? Absolutely not, they made sure. Right, now let's take a look at some of the features that Terramate has to offer. Feature number one being stacks. Terramate introduces this concept of stacks. Now what are stacks? Stacks are isolated at independent units that contain infrastructure code. Hence, stacks enable you to break down monolith infrastructure as code projects into manageable units. This not only reduces the blast radius, but also speeds up the execution, clarifies ownership, and fosters better collaboration amongst team members. Moving on, 
orchestrating Terraform commands like Terraform plan or Terraform apply in a specific order can be a bit of a challenge when you work with larger projects. Terramate simplifies this by allowing you to define the order of the execution based on criteria such as tags or stacks that we just saw that contain the changes. This basically ensures a smooth and controlled workflow. One of my favorite features, Terramate's Git integration is a game changer. It lets you execute Terraform commands like Terraform apply only against the stacks that have undergone the changes. And this feature seamlessly integrates in your CI CD pipelines and offers advanced functionality such as module change detection for Terraform stacks. You may have heard of the concept dry, meaning don't repeat yourself. And keeping the Terraform configurations dry is actually a breeze when you're using Terraform. You can programmatically generate Terraform backend and provider configuration. So the maintainability is really affected in a good way. Additionally, you can provide blueprints for your teams to create these stacks with pre-configured infrastructure that saves time and also reduces the errors. Let's talk about data sharing. You can define the data once and inherit, extend or overwrite it across your stack hierarchy. This feature is particularly useful for setting values like tags or environments used in multiple stacks. It also promotes consistency and efficiency. Lastly, the feature that I already gave you a spoiler for at the beginning of this video native Terraform code. Terramate always generates native Terraform code, ensuring compatibility with Terraform workspaces and various CI CD providers that we previously saw. This seamless integration simplifies your workflow and enhances productivity. Before we jump into the demo, I want to answer a very important question. Who is it for? Who should use Terramate? So Terramate, I believe it's not just limited to a specific group of people, but it caters to a broad spectrum of professionals. For example, DevOps engineers. Terramate streamlines infrastructure management, making it a pretty good tool for DevOps professionals. The next one being cloud native developers. Developers working in a cloud native environment will appreciate uh, Terramate's uh, capabilities for faster development and deployments. Also, platform engineers. Platform engineers can harness Terramate's uh, features to enhance the infrastructure provisioning and management. And for cloud engineers, Terramate offers a valuable toolkit to effectively manage Terraform configurations. Also, if you're just getting into infrastructure score, you're learning about Terraform and stuff, in that case as well, Terramate can help you. So yeah, check out the links in the description below. Make sure you start the repository, join the Discord channel. All the links can be found in the description below. And uh, yeah, you can start the GitHub repo, join the open source initiative and um, yeah, take part in the conversations on Discord. So yeah, links in the description below. All right, so we saw what it's all about, a little bit of uh, you know uh, the terminologies, whom is it for, the features and all sorts of things. Now to the main part, let's take a look at the demo, how it works, and um, yeah, just play around with it. So regarding the demo, uh, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install Terramate, and the Terragram, uh, Terramate uh, project, it uh, distributes into two binaries. The first one is uh, Terramate, which is the CLI, and then there's the Terramate-LS, which is the language server. So you can use package managers, I'm gonna install uh, using Brew, That looks good. And it's just going to install it. Downloading, installing. That's done. So, yeah, that's pretty much about it. Mm -hmm. Teramate also supports auto completion commands. Uh, so, you can use this. Uh, command Terramate install uh, dash completions and it's going to install that. Now let's see some of the basic commands and uh, how Terramate works. There are a bunch of ways by which you can do this. We'll be creating a static si site and we'll be seeing some of the fundamentals that Terramate has to offer uh, and integrate it with like Git and all sorts of things and how you can then move forward to more like complex projects. So it all starts with the basic uh, fundamentals and that's what we're going to be looking into. Do note that you need a Terramate, Terraform, and get installed uh, for this demo. I just showed you how to install uh, Terramate. Terraform, pretty simple, you can Google it. Git as well, I've made a complete tutorial on it already. Right, so how do we start using Terramate? Kunal, we've installed it. So there are two ways by which you can do this. Way number one, if you invoke Terramate inside a Git repository, so it will automatically assume the top level of your repository as the project's root. So it does that automatically. But if you want to use it for something that is maybe, let's say not a Git repository, then you have to mention this uh, root manually. And you can do that by creating a terramate.tm.hcl file. And that's how you basically set up your project. So what we can do is I can show you how to get started uh, with the basic project. And then later on, we'll add Git to it as well. So here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, gonna create a new project. 
so kdir project and uh, i'm gonna go into this project right here i'm gonna create a file teramate dot tm dot hcl and what am i going to write inside this i'm just going to say teramate config that's it for now okay cool now i'm going to run my command teramate create my site so it said created stack my site you all are familiar with stack the thing we just learned about if you list down as you can see it says my site over here pretty cool stuff so you see what we did here right we established the root uh, manually and we just run this command and it sets up our project now we can play around with it very simple okay let's explore a little bit i've just increased my font a little bit as well so you can see it created this my site directory uh let's see what is inside it okay there's a file called stack.tm.hcl i'm going to see what is inside this file this is what is inside this file so it says um, there's a stack block which is fine and uh, it has name description and a randomly generated id over here you all remember what a stack is right it is simply a directory where terramate uh, generates the terraform files and the extension of the files that we're using is .tm or .tm.hcl these two extensions are the ones that terramate recognizes and any of the files just like this one that contains a stack block is going to be considered as a stack so this file that was just generated using the command that we just ran you can do this uh, let's say without an id as well and for that you can use the terramate create command and you can generate stacks without this id if you want but it's not recommended i'd say have the ids as these are unique references okay let me show you some more commands if i say terramate list so it's just saying my site so it's my site here is listed as a stack okay so we learned about stacks we have created a stack but the stack right now doesn't do anything so if you just say terramate generate it says nothing to do, generated code is up to date. Stack is made, project is set up, root, we learned about that. But right now it doesn't do anything. So I hope the demo till now is clear. We are going step by step so that you can follow. So I just added this uh, bit of code in my Terramate uh, the stack file. This basically shows me how to generate an HCL file, which is called uh, mysite.tf. And that is going to contain the Terraform code for a local file so you can see i've listed in my resource over here so in order to create this uh, terraform file i'll just run terramate generate and it's going to do that also note as i showed you in the features part of this video terramate it natively works with uh, you know it's going to natively create the terraform code so you actually don't really need any uh, wrappers so i'm gonna do terramate generate again okay so now i'm gonna run terramate generate Code generation report success mysite.tf has been created. If you want to see what the file looks like, there you go. Here I have the code that I added already, and here's the stack that was pre built. So it shows success my site, and I can just do a list again a list of my site. Mysite.tf has been created. So my Terraform file has been created using Terramate. How cool is that? Now I can go inside my directory, I can say terraform in it terraform apply yes resources one added there you go all good but one question you may have is uh, kunal you just hard coded some stuff in the in the file you know when you were creating the stack but there might be possibilities let's say you need very different like variable um, data for different environments like production and testing for example so let's say i had the my website uh, for a simple example i just hard coded the title as my website but what if it needs to be different for different environments and i mentioned to you one of the features like it doesn't allow you to like it like the dry code so don't repeat yourself that good fundamental uh, you know approach is also followed over here the question is how so teramate does this by using the concepts known as globals so you can define these uh, things inside the globals and uh, it's going to be inheriting it. Let's say the globals are inherited by subdirectory. 
from the parent one and if there are two or more variables with the same lay, same name then it gets overwritten so let's see that in action okay so in my root directory i'll create a file i'll say touch let's say globals dot terame dot hcl i am going to add in my globals uh, block over here and let's say i will add a title which is going to say we make devs website that looks good note that i did not have to create this specific file i could have just added it uh, in my teramate.tm.hcl file as well but i just wanted to make things more uh, cleaner if you will doesn't really matter because all the teramate files will be merged at runtime as you can see right now i have to similar to how terraform also merges uh, .tf files so now in my stack file instead of hard coding this uh, my website title over here what i can do is i can just use my globals variable so i can just in this uh, sort of like section i can write global dot title so it's gonna take the vmake devs website one now that should be it now simply run teramate generate and that's it looks good <laughs> very simple okay now let's go a step further whatever we just did well don't really forget about it but we're going to elevate it a little bit what we're going to do is we're going to modularize our code so instead of having like a dedicated like let's say if we just have one stack we are going to make it more reusable and that's where uh, most of the power is really going to shine so this is going to be unrelated to terraform modules and we can like reuse it as much time as you want this my stack or the my site that we just created and let's see how that works so this is what we have currently and we're going to remove the my site so i'm going to create a new module and i'm going to move it uh, the stack uh, tm.hcl into my new module and remove my site now if i click on ls you can see i have replaced my site with modules and if i check what is inside modules i have my site over here so now i've created a module and uh, I can reuse it basically as much time as we want also one more thing i want you to note here is that if i go into my modules my site my site.tm.hcl i no longer want to the want that um, you know the generation of the code i no longer want that to occur directly in the modules and uh, that's why i'm gonna only contain the generate hcl block and i'm gonna remove the stack over here that looks good okay now if i do teramate list let's see what it gives me nothing not giving me anything because we removed the stack so no stack should appear over here and i don't have i don't believe i have any teramate files that have a stack in it so yeah pretty cool so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create uh, two stacks for one for production one for de development and I can say in my root directory teramate create dev my site and I can say prod my site. What does my project look like now? I have my dev, I have my prod, and uh, inside my dev, I can see I'll also have my site. So I have dev my site, prod my site, modules my site globals and the teramate tm let's see it pretty cool now let's say i have this sort of like a structure i need to have different uh, type of content for dev and different type of content for prog prod how can we do this how can we have like different let's say for starters for basic simplicity i'm like uh, i just want to set a variable uh, like environment as dev and environment as prod globals we just learned that so vim dev slash my site stat uh, stack dot tm dot hcl here i can add in my globals okay similarly i can say prod Can add in my globals
it's good so i've just opened up my project in uh, vs code so you can see and i separated the globals in a different file for prod and uh, dev over here and this just looks much uh, much more cleaner so any stack let's say here uh, because of this any stack that we have under this uh, prod directory it's going to inherit this global uh, variable env is equal to prod unless we override it or explicitly like unset it and uh, in dev as well any directory that i create inside this folder so inside the dev directory it's going to do the same thing now what we want to do is the the site that we have my site we want uh, to import the my site uh, code inside this uh, stack that we have just created okay so we have the module my site we have two stacks over here and we want to import it inside uh, the environment right so let's say i have these two stacks so inside this stack dot uh, tm dot hcl i'm just going to add an import statement right so i'm going to say import and i'll just add the source similarly I will do the same thing with this stack and add the import statement. As simple as that. But one thing I want to do over here is the file name path, the output path that we have over here. Now this will change as well because it will be different for the prod environment, different for the dev environment. So I can use the teramate uh, metadata and I can just add in my path over here. I can say teramate dot stack dot path dot relative slash index dot html. Yeah, that looks good. Now what I can do is I can go inside my, let's say, prod, my site, and I can say, let's run my command. I can say teramate run and uh, terraform in it. Okay, now I'm getting some errors saying outdated, uh, generated, code detected. Okay, <laughs> outdated, generated, code detected. This is happening because I did not run uh, teramate uh, generate. I should do that. So I will run this success. That looks good. Then I will run teramate run and terraform in it. Nice. Cool. Pretty nice. So terraform has been successfully initiated. Looks good. Also, it's uh, I just showed you for a demo purpose, but uh, ideally you would be running the teramate uh, run terraform in it uh, command. So the teramate run command on uh, the root directory so that it runs for all the stacks right so as you can see we have the um you know um in this uh, we have uh, two of the stacks if you check it out uh, the dev and prod and i ran it on the root directory so it ran for all the stacks that are in this uh, root directory so dev and prod okay now here you can see we have the my site dot tf file uh, created um, so this is we have our terraform file similarly we have for prod as well we have for dev as well and some other files um so you can see for the stack and uh, for the prod and this is the globals one which have our globals data uh just some terameter uh, files over here but these are the main ones that just got generated so we created our terraform files via terameter Okay, it's like a basic little demo uh, that I just showed you and uh, we can do more complex stuff with it uh, for more complex files and if you have any specific use cases you want me to cover let me know in the comment section below but in the future videos on a more product use cases part we'll be seeing some of the more heavy use cases around how it works but these were like some of the like the fundamentals of the installation and how it works and stuff like that so that's basically about it now we live in a world where efficiency and collaboration is paramount and here teramate stands as a potent solution for supercharging your terraform projects with its code generator and orchestrator features you can simplify infrastructure management as we just saw reduce the manual overhead and enjoy a superior developer experience whether you're managing small scale projects or overseeing enterprise level infrastructure as code teramate i assure you can be a game changing uh, addition to your terraform journey so yeah i hope you enjoyed the video and the demo check out the links in the description below as always support the open source initiative so you can start their github repository give them some love if you have any questions you can either comment down this video and if there's a specific video example you want me to let's say create another video on uh, on a use case maybe cicd is a good one i can probably do that in the next one so yeah, if you want to see more of uh, teramate you can let me know in the comment section below and I'm happy to make uh, more videos around it. But uh, you can also join their Discord channel. Also, the link can be found in the description below. So you can directly communicate with the maintainers and the creators of the project and share your feedback, ask questions, get involved in the community, 
and uh, support the project and uh, yeah thanks a lot for watching make sure you like share and subscribe and uh, you can share it on public uh, in public as well the learning in public initiative so you can write a twitter thread tag taramate uh, like what you learned or if you have any questions you can ask those in public as well i'm happy to answer those um for sure but yeah see you in the next one have a great day